Today we are brewing beer outside in Hernan's farm. Yeah, Campo Chico, first brew ever we're gonna do a strawberry because this year we had a lot of strawberries. We are uh, in the middle of the field, 1850 house in the back, should taste good. Let's do it. So we are going to first of all get our water ready. I just brought some distilled water from the store. So we'll, we'll just be using that. Uh, this recipe calls for 4.45 gallons. We're going to brew a three gallon batch. I brought 4.5 gallons. We should be good. I think, think we should actually cover it. Because this is distilled water, we're going to need to treat it. And uh, I have brought some water salts for that as well. But first of all, I'm done you know, waiting. Yeah, <laughs> just stick some more holes in. First of all, we need to get this water in here. It goes faster. Okay, I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way and let's compare. Oh, glug. look at the time. Glug, glug, yeah. So, look, here's the thing now we've got water in the kettle. This is an electric brewing system, not using propane. So, how do we heat this water up? So, we have a generator. We're gonna try first time again, all this is first time set up outdoor, middle of nowhere. Electric, why not? 240 volt electric as well. 240, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna do this in style. All right. Uh, let's crank it let's up. Let's try, let's give it a try. We've got the generator running now. You can hear that, but nice job sound dampening it there. We'll, we'll, we'll have subtitles. Yeah, <laughs> nice job with the, the board. So because I use distilled water, we need to, to treat the water a little bit. So uh, what I've got here is some water salt. So I've got gypsum, calcium chloride, Epsom salt, um, and baking soda. And what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna put some water in here, dissolve this, and add it into the distilled water. So this is a wheat beer. We've got to do a wheat base. We're just going to use a very simple set of hops and a very simple set of grains with this beer. And really, we're looking at the strawberries as being like the big the, ingredient. The, the, the big ingredient. And we're going to use a yeast that's going to enhance that, that strawberry taste as well. So we're splitting the, the ingredients here 50 50 with the two ingredients. Uh, first one is just German Pilsner malt, is that baseball? And then the other half of that is wheat malt as well. So wheat malt, German Pilsner, that's, that's all we're adding. I did add a couple of rice holes, which you might be able to see at the top here, uh, just so that we don't get any sort of stuck sparge. Rice well, doesn't have its own husks, so it's important for that. But yeah, when this gets up to temperature, throw it in. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get this recirculating, maintain the mash rest at 152, and uh, I guess we need to find something to do for an hour now. How about grilling? Deal. So we have about an hour and a half to, for, for the mashing. In the meantime, beautiful day. Why not just grill something? I would expect no less, Adam. We have beer. We're making more beer. Grill. That's it, man. So the, the hops for this beer, it's not a hoppy beer, right? Shouldn't. No. So the only thing we're doing is adding bittering hops. This will go in at the start of the boil. We're using like the lowest alpha acid bittering hops I could find. So these are Hersbrucker hops. And I was going to stick these in for the duration of the boil. So Hernan, if you could do the honors. Let's just do it. Oh, fail. There we go. All right, there we go. Last pellet in. So yeah, we'll let this do its thing. No more hop additions, that's it. Just that one bittering hop. It's not like we're going to get any window foggy or anything, right? <laughs> This house ended up being the oldest house in Lee County. It was built in 1815, and it needs some serious work. Donations accepted. So we've got three pounds of frozen strawberries? We got three pounds, yeah. We think we need two pounds of frozen strawberries to put in, um, in the secondary. So we're gonna put roughly a third of this just into the last couple of minutes of the boil. Now, the, if you do that, 
you're going to make a cloudier beer. So in this case, we're uh, we're brewing a wheat beer. So wheat beer, so it doesn't matter. We don't care. So we thought it might be interesting to sort of see what fruit flavors we get in the boil, just for the, the last couple of minutes. That's it. Scientific one pound. Is it? About a pound. Yeah. It has a little pinkish tone to it now. <laughs> oh, so much nicer when that's turned off. Oh, there's a reason why this thing comes with a long extension to put it far away from the house, close the doors. So, in the keg. In the keg. Come on, a hint pink. Yeah. But the yeah. aroma already changed right away. I don't know, we'll see. It reminded me of strawberry marmalade. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so we'll see um, if hot strawberries or cold strawberries, uh, how that works out. Well, we're doing both. So we are maximizing strawberries, hot side, cold side. We still have, there. yes, we still have two pounds of fresh uh, harvest strawberries. We can do a little more beer or daiquiris. All right, well, I will get this guy home and uh, add it into the fermenter. And uh, yeah, maybe it's time to eat that lunch now. Sounds about right. Let's do it. That was a fun day out. Thanks, Herman, for hosting me at the farm. So I have taken that keg and transferred it into my spike fermenter. And the wort came out at about 118 Fahrenheit out of the keg into here. So I hit it with some glycol and I've got it down to my fermentation temperature, which is 70 Fahrenheit. In terms of original gravity, this came out at 1049. I was shooting for 1051, so despite taking no measurements whatsoever, it seems to have basically worked out. Now, in terms of yeast, I was thinking originally of using some kind of traditional Hefeweizen yeast, but Todd at Atlantic Brew Supply has helped me out here and recommended this guy. This is Sundew Ale from Amiga Yeast. And if you think of a traditional sort of Hefeweizen yeast, you'll get some sort of fruity esters, typically banana combined with clove. This will accentuate the fruit, in particular strawberry, ripe strawberry flavor, um, but you won't get any of that clove element uh, to the beer. It smells a little bit of ripe strawberries, can that be right? I don't know, this is gonna be good, I think. So I'm gonna let fermentation happen now, and when the primary fermentation is complete, then we'll come back and add the rest of the strawberries in. All right, here we go. Strawberry wheat. I have to say this has been sat at home in my brewery for a while and I have not touched a drop waiting for this. Proud of you. Yeah, this was, this is a pretty looking beer, isn't it? So. Well, it, you know, it looks wheat beer, wheaty. Wheaty, yep, definitely um, not clear. And it has a very faint pinkish reddish stone to it. I gotta say, I never came across a strawberry beer before. Okay, it's not sniffing. <laughs> Enough. It smells Enough. delicious though, doesn't it? It definitely it's, has. It's just candy, yeah. Yeah, it's got that strawberry aroma to it for sure. Let's give it a taste. Let's go for it. It's a great beer for summer. Mm -hmm. Very light, and the uh, natural acidity of the uh, of, of the strawberries. This is uh, quite surprisingly well balanced because the strawberry is very present, but not like oh, it's a strawberry. It's not overwhelming. No. The uh, the aroma is very definitely strawberries. I think we've done a pretty damn good job of balancing this between the strawberry flavor and then the, the wheat beer, which, you know, we picked scientifically the amount of strawberries to add in based on how many you had the, in the bag. Uh, yeah, we had like uh, 70 plants. <laughs> what a wonderful idea. Strawberry beer. Cheers, mate. Well done. Wow, yeah. Fantastic effort. Thanks for uh, letting us brew at your farm. It's fantastic, man. It is fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic. 